Thank you for flying Almost Airlines. How may I help you today? Uh, yes, here's my ticket. I see that you're flying to Los Angeles. Yes. Do you have any luggage to check today? I have three bags. This one, I would like you to send to Seattle. This one, I would like you to send to San Diego. And this one, I'd like you to send to Omaha, Nebraska. Sir, we can't send your luggage to different places. Why not? You did last time I flew with you. Tormented from 1960. It was written, directed, and a story by Bert I. Gordon. Oh, well, do I get any sides with this? Uh, let me see. Uh, well, let's see. With this, you get a side of uh, uh, Richard Carlson, Susan Gordon, Eugene Sanders, Joe Turkle, with a side uh, extra helping of Julie Redding. What do you mean by extra helping? Well, in 1960, uh, Julie's members uh, uh, measurements were 40, 23, 35. Wow, then I'll have the Jane Mansfield instead. I'm sorry, no substitutions allowed. Okay, fine. The Julie Redding will be fine then. Okay, and uh, would you like a, a demo test while uh, you're looking over the menu? Oh, no thanks, but I'll have a cup of coffee. Sure you will. Oh, oh, by the way, uh, are you expecting any friends? Yes, um, a few hundred. A few hundred? Mm-hmm. You know, you look over the menu while I try to find a couple hundred folding chairs. Okay, you do that. And we'll be right back. One pound may go towards powering the television for three hours. Or perhaps be made into another drink. Enjoy.
I once loved this island. This is where I found peace and quiet. The peace of waves forever breaking on the shore, the quiet of tranquil moonlight on the sea. But when the night wind rises and the fingers of the fog steal in, they say you can hear voices. They say it's the dead growing restless and calling to the living. I never believed it until that evening Vi came looking for me. But you always knew that marriage was out. I never lied to you. But I always thought that... Look, Vi, whatever you thought is your business. But it's all over. It's finished. You should never have come here, and you'll be doing yourself a favor if you take the first boat back. I can't go back without you. Please come back with me, Tom. Just tell her you changed your mind. Nobody even knows I'm on the island. I chartered a private boat over. I won't even go back to the club. I'll quit right now. Why, will you for heaven's sakes realize when a good thing is over? A second-rate singer like me doesn't fit in the picture anymore. I hear she's quite young and has money, too. Why, please understand, I'm in love with her. I need you, Tom. No one will ever love you more than I do. I'm sorry, Vi. I'm sorry for everything. Good night, Vi. I still have your letters. I've never been in a lighthouse before. Show me the light, darling. throw anything like that away. You never know when they might come in handy. I wonder how she'd feel if I read them to her. Putting in pertinent footnotes, of course. Or maybe I ought to show them to a lawyer. I'm sure he'd know what to do with them. How would a lawsuit fit in with your music career, Tom? How would the piano genius of jazz feel about that kind of publicity? Darling, you look as if you were ready to kill me. Now, you get this straight. I'm marrying Meg. And you get this straight, Tom Stewart. No one will ever have you but me. Help me! Please, Tom, help me! Take my hand! Pull me up! Save me, Tom, please!
Sandy, look, do me a favor, will you, and run out and play somewhere. I'm busy. I... Don't you like me anymore? Sure, I like you. I love you. I just want to be by myself. Where were you last night? The Emersons had a beach barbecue, and everyone on the island was there. Meg was looking all over for you. Sandy, please run along. Okay. Sorry to disturb you. I almost forgot. The wedding announcements came, and Mommy wants you to look at one before we send them out. There's only a week till the big day. Yeah, okay, okay. Seaweed. I know what's the matter with me. I'm seeing things. I'm letting my imagination run wild. Is it my conscience? No. Why should it bother me? I didn't do anything to buy. I didn't kill her. It's her own fault she's dead. came out here of her own accord. She leaned against the railing, she fell. It wasn't my fault if it gave way. Why should I be blamed? I had nothing to do with it. Anyway, nobody ever needs to know. Nobody will even connect me with her. Why should they? Except for this watch of hers. All right, bye. That's the end of you. someone else? Oh, no, no. It's just that I wasn't expecting anyone. Uh, what are you doing up here? Looking for you. What are you doing up here in this old lighthouse? Well, I... At least it's quiet. I, uh... I, I wanted to think. I guess I'm worried about that Carnegie Hall thing next month. I wonder if I'm good enough. Of course you're good enough. You're the best jazz pianist in the world. Did I? It's not perfume. It is perfume, our page. So cold. 
old and gloomy in here. It gives me the creeps having that big lamp staring at us. I haven't liked it up here since the light stopped working. Glad they're going to tear it down. Well, let's go outside for the sun's warm, huh? Sending the gown tomorrow. Oh, you're gonna love it, Tom. Ooh, are we supposed to see about a tie for Dad? And I forgot. I'll be so glad when this whole thing's over with, won't you? It'll only be a week more. We can't wait that long, can't we? to go to the mainland and be married this afternoon. About the wedding? Well, I was never for a big deal anyway. I only agreed to it because you wanted it. Doesn't it matter that I still want it? Please, Meg, please, do this for me. Just go away with me right now. I told you that's impossible. Oh, my mother and father to think of as well as you. Then I'll have to go by myself. What about the wedding? What about it, Meg? If you go, there won't be one, that's all. Meg. Welcome. It's time once again to... Ask Melanie. It's time once again to open up our emails and answer your relationship questions. Dear Melanie, I have this problem. I'm dating this rich, good-looking guy who makes a lot of money. He is very attentive to my every need and he wants to marry me. The problem is I don't know if I love him. Do you think that I should go ahead and marry him? Signed, Doubtful Debbie. Debbie, 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 I always say coffee, chocolate, and men. Some things are just better rich. Take the ring, Debbie. Take the ring. Oh, and in the answer to your email, Butch, I don't make prison calls. Okay, thanks for the emails, everyone. See you next time. Well, now, that sounds like great advice, as long as you don't take it. Join us the next time we Ask Melanie. Commodore Gray had a dog and a cat with a big bow wow and a little meow. They all lived together with never a spat. How in the world did they ever do that with a big bow wow and a little meow, meow, bow wow, meow, bow wow, meow. The cat.
sat in the dark at a barrel of fun with a big bow wow and a little meow. Although they were different, they fooled everyone. Commodore Gray proved a lot can be done with a big bow wow and a little meow. Meow, bow wow, meow, bow wow, meow. Well, Commodore Gray often said to the crew with a big bow wow and a little meow. Though so each man among us is different, it's true. My cat and dog get along, so can you with a big bow wow and a little meow. Meow, bow wow, meow, bow wow. A big bow wow and a little meow. court. Lawyers are buttheads. You take that back. Oh, what are you, a lawyer? No, I'm a butthead. And now we will perform the greatest of all magic accomplishments ever performed on this island. The secret cabinet. As you will please notice, the cabinet is empty. Tom, Tom, you're not paying any attention. Don't you want to see the secret cabinet? Oh, sure I do. I, I wouldn't miss it. Go ahead. If I close the doors to the magic cabinet and say the magic words and tap it with my magic wand, abacadabra, we no longer have an empty cabinet. It is now filled with jelly beans. Tom Stewart. Fine one you are. Sandy. Sandy, if you hate me for the rest of your life, I deserve it. I couldn't hate you no matter what you did. No matter what I did? No matter what. Even like fighting with your sister? Meg's mad at me, you know. She'll get over it. Besides, if she doesn't, you'll be free to marry me. Okay. From now on, you're the other woman in my life. Okay, honey. You run along now. I got some practicing to do. I'll clean up your magic stuff. Bye. Bye, Tom. Tom. I 
brought you some flowers. Is something the matter, Tom? What makes you say that? You sound upset. Perhaps I'd better check you another time. Oh, no. No, Mrs. Ellis. No, come in and sit down. Thank you for the flowers. They're lovely. Sit down right here. Mrs. Ellis, I want to ask you something. <laughs> Sounds kind of silly, but... Well, do you believe that the spirits of the dead can come back to haunt the living? Do you believe in ghosts? What makes you ask a thing like that? You haven't answered, Mrs. Ellis. Nobody believes in ghosts nowadays. Well, do you? If anybody was to ask me seriously, I would have to say no. Of course, a real estate agent runs into many strange things in an empty house sometimes. What kind of things? Well, there was a family named Samuels. They lived in that last house down the beach. One day, their little boy took his dog and went fishing. They never came back, and nobody knows what happened to them. After the Samuels moved away, I signed three tenants during that first month, but not one of them would stay more than a few days. Yeah, yeah, I know that story, but that doesn't prove anything. They complained about an unseen dog whining and scratching at the door, but that wasn't what made them break their lease. It was the cold up in the boy's room. You could feel it in your bones, a deathly cold. The walls were always damp and stained with seawater. Whatever caused it, the thing came back every night. Did you ever see it, Mrs. Ellis? It's been many years since I've seen anything. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I keep forgetting. Did, did anybody see it? People say they found wet seaweed on the boy's bed. Oh, but you can't call wet seaweed a ghost, can you? Tom, what's wrong? Why do you ask that? You're running away from something. Well, Tom? Well, something I... I can't believe exists myself. If it does exist, you can't solve anything by running. Then, on the other hand, if it doesn't exist, there's nothing to run from. You're a very wise woman, Mrs. Ellis. Thanks for talking with me. Oh, and thanks for the flowers. They're beautiful. Come back soon.
Bye. You can't hear me, can you? Because you don't even exist. You're a shadow, perhaps. Light, perhaps. Nothing more. But, by just in case you can hear me, I've come to tell you this. I'm not going to pay any attention to you anymore. I'm going to live my life right here. I'm going to stop running. And I'm going to marry Meg, Vi. I'm going to marry Meg. That's all I came to say. It's going to be just as though you never existed. I'm going to marry Meg. Just in case you can hear me, bye. Good night. And goodbye. No one will ever have you with me. in the refrigerator. Help yourself. Okay. Mrs. Elf said you wanted to see me. What about? I, uh, sit down. I wondered if you'd, uh, Talk to your sister Meg for me. Tell her how sorry I am. Okay. You tell her I behaved like a little boy and I'm ashamed of myself. I'll tell her. She didn't call anything off. She didn't? Uh-uh. Guess she's ready to make up. Just like grown-ups. <laughs> Are you all ready? Yeah, I'm all ready. Have you got the ring and everything? just a little bit young. I know. Dear little Sandy, she's just a child. Why, do you know how old I am? I'm practically nine. Why, in China and, and Borneo and India and places like that, girls already have husbands at my age. Hmm. I'd get married tomorrow if I could find someone like you. <laughs> Can't I please try the ring? I just put it on your finger. Put what on my finger? The ring. I don't have the ring. Sandy, tell me the truth. Didn't you see anything right there? There wasn't anything to see. You heard. I'm sorry. Well, I'll, I'll find the ring later. You run along now, Sandy. I, I've got to finish my practicing. Goodbye, Sandy. I'll see you later. All right, bye. I know now you've come back. 
but it won't do you any good. Because I'm going to marry Meg. Now, what'd you do with the ring, Vi? Vi, what did you do with that ring? Hi, and welcome back from our really bad chick flick movie, Tormented. And if this movie teaches you men anything, it should teach you it's not so easy to get rid of a girlfriend. Stalker. Pardon me? I said stalker. If a guy would do what Vi is doing, he'd be considered a stalker. But Vi is dead. Being dead is no excuse for being a stalker. Okay, well, you'll have to take that up with the writer. Well, that would be Bird Eye Gordon, who did 25 science fiction films, from starting with King Dinosaur in 1955, going to 1990 with his last film of Satan's Princess. He even employed his daughter, Susan Gordon, as the role of the little sister, Sandy. Susan first started her film career in her father's film, Attack of the Puppet People. She got that role when the girl that was supposed to play the Girl Scout came down with a high fever. Yeah, but she was probably best known for an episode of Twilight Zone she was in, and she was even showed up at uh, a few Twilight Zone conventions. So, do you have my drink? Oh, yeah, I, I brought it right here. Oh, is it a good vintage? Yeah, let me see. Yeah, last month was a great year. Oh, you don't have anything newer? I don't know. I'll have to go check the Coke machine. Oh, thanks. We'll be right back. Fire took place three years ago. There was a lightning strike. The winds picked up and the fire just took off. You're in shock. You don't know what you're feeling. You have nothing anymore. I lost my home and 40 years worth of art. I never thought that I would need help from the Red Cross. They gave me emotional support too. It's one of the many ways to fight osteoarthritis pain. For more information on managing pain, go to fightarthritispain.org.
understand what you're going to... All right. No more questions. You know what's wrong with you? What? You've been working too hard, getting ready for your concert. You've had a lonely life here on the island, away from all your musician friends. It's been getting you down. But I'll take care of all that once we're married. Maybe you better tell your mother that the wedding's on again. I never told her it was off. You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? You know, the first thing you're going to do is have a long vacation. A whole month's honeymoon in Europe. Uh-uh. You know how many hit records I'd have to sell to pay for that? Dad's footing the bill. It's his wedding present to us. He wanted to tell you himself, but he won't be here to write before the wedding. And when we get back, I'm going to have a big party so I can get to know all your friends. Big party will be living in a three-room apartment. Mother and Daddy won't mind if we use their house in Bel Air. They say now that I'm getting married, it's too big for them anyway, so they'll be turning it over to us for good one of these days. Are you trying to spoil me? There's nothing I'd like better. Come on up to the house a minute. I want you to see something. What? My wedding gown. Isn't that supposed to be bad luck? You're not superstitious about things like that, are you? No. I'm not superstitious. My garden's full of roses this month, and it seemed about time to bring you some fresh ones, so... Hi. Hello. Well, hello, stranger. Hi, Kate. Where have you been keeping yourself, lady? Uh, some beautiful gifts have arrived, and you haven't seen any of them. Hey, look at this. But you're a dear anyway. Champagne. Fix your drink. Mmm. <laughs> look, another one. Uh-oh, there's my girl. Hi, pal. Hi. Is everything made up with you and Matt? Well, I'm working on it. Hi, Miss Ellis. Tom. Another pair. People must think newlyweds live on lettuce by candlelight. This makes nine pairs of candlesticks and 12 salad bowls and more coming every time the mailboat arrives. Meg got her wedding gown today and Tom, it's simply a dream. What a bride goes through to make herself attractive for you men. It took three fittings to get the bodice right, and three layers of net to make the skirt full enough. Well, hardly seems worth it. After all, I'm only marrying her, so you'll be my mother-in-law. Sandy, see if there's a window open. There's a cold draft all of a sudden. Be the fresh roses. My roses never smelled like that. It's a woman's perfume. Help me make room for these, dear. In my day, it wasn't candlesticks, it was teaspoons. Mr. Hubbard and I received no less than 78 of them when we were married. Maybe that's a reason for his attitude. When he went back to the mainland, he said he was going to go right to the office and stay there until the wedding. I'm sure you'll never treat your wife like that, will you, Tom? Or will you? He isn't here, Mother. Where is he? I think Meg took him to look at her dress. My wedding dress! What is it? What did she find? Seaweed. Tom? Yes, Mrs. Ellis. I'm in here. I brought you some honey. Don't get up. I'll just put it on the bar here. Thank you, Mrs. Ellis. I really brought the honey only as an excuse, because I knew you were upset. Tom, there's nothing supernatural about what happened to Meg's dress. There must be a logical explanation. I know, I know. That seaweed, it's just like that Samuels boy. There have been no recent deaths, Tom. No. Anyway, I'm sure of one thing. I've had enough of her. Who are you talking about? Oh, a, a friend I used to have, a girl named Vi. She came over here to the island to see me. We, well, we quarreled up in the lighthouse. And, well, at any rate, she went back to the mainland. 
Are you sure that's what happened? What do you mean, am I sure? Well, maybe she didn't go back to the mainland. Maybe this girl Vi is still here and is playing tricks to get even. Now, where do you suppose a woman could hide on this island? Who's hiding? Never mind, Sandy. Things will work out. You'll see. There are some things that grown-ups don't want children to know about, Sandy. Those are always the most interesting things. Who is Tom looking for? Never mind. Daddy's looking for at the lighthouse. He's always hanging around there. The lighthouse is a very dangerous place, Sandy. It'll soon be torn down. That doesn't keep people from going there. But you mustn't go there, Sandy. Not ever. Run along home now. Come on, Fritz. What's the matter, Fritz? I'm surprised at you. You're being as silly as Tom. All right, I'll go alone. perfume you're wearing. It's no use. I know you're in here somewhere. I can hear you, too. Don't you think it's ridiculous to hide? Come down. There's something I want to say to you. Very well. If you won't, then I'll go up and find you. give people advice, but Tom is a dear friend and I want to ask you to leave him alone. Are you listening to me? You might at least have the politeness to answer. <laughs> My, that's a nasty laugh you have. What tricks are you up to now? Wait, listen to me. you're worrying and frightening Tom half to death. It's not hard to sense how desperate he's getting. I know Meg doesn't concern you, but you wouldn't want to make an innocent person suffer, would you? I wish you'd speak more clearly. You're trying to make me sorry for you, I suppose, but I can't help thinking how foolish you are playing this absurd game. and let me talk to you, please. You've caused those two people all the unhappiness you need to. It's time you stopped. You don't belong here, you know. Why don't you leave Tom and Meg alone and go back? What are you saying? I can't hear you. What a fiend you are. You're not fooling me. I know exactly what you are. It's not fair. You're getting the party, the presents, the husband. I get nothing. Be nice to me, Peanut. In two more days, I'll be a married woman, and you'll miss me. I'll miss Tom more. Sandy. 
How's my family? Daddy! Am I too early or too late? I'm so happy you made it in time. You don't think I'd let my daughter marry without her favorite father being around now, do you? <laughs> well, roll up your sleeves and pitch in. The party's right after tomorrow's rehearsal. Hi, honey. Frank. Where's the groom? He's not feeling well. What's the matter with him? He's been overworking. At the piano, I suppose. Please don't start that again. It's bad enough to accept a musician into this family, but a jazz musician is asking too damn much. Why don't you go to bed, dear? You must be tired. What's the matter with a jazz musician? Be still, brat. Poor Tom. Here or something, I asked if you live here. In the lighthouse? No, on the island. On the island. Why do you want to know? Look, kid, I really don't care. I'm looking for a guy called Tom Stewart. Do you know him? What do you want him for? He won 200,000 a sweepstakes ticket, and I'm here to give him the money. I don't believe you. Look, kid, do you know where he lives? Dave, Mr. Huffman is here to see you. Haven't we been having trouble with this health care provider? Yes, we did. Okay, go ahead and send him in, but check out his insurance company while he's still here. Yes, Doctor. Hi, right, James, come on in. Have a seat. Uh, look to be in pain there, so what seems to be the, the problem? I have a sore back. My knees hurt. Well, really, what do you think caused that? I don't know. I think it could be because I've been crouching down so I won't be seen in comedy sketches. Oh, okay. Dr. Dave. Yes, Nurse Lovely. Ah, just what we thought. Mm -hmm. Okay, with me. Okay, this is for you. What's this? Well, you've heard that laughter is the best medicine, right? Of course. That's a prescription for 22 chuckles. You're kidding. Look, your insurance is very, very restrictive on what it pays. You've got to be kidding. Now you, just, just give me something else. There is one thing I can do, but you're not going to like it. I don't care. Just give it to me. All right, but you're not going to like it. <clears throat> Dr. Dave, what are you doing? Look, the only thing your insurance will pay for is a medical noogie. Uh, oh. <laughs> Thank you. 
She came up and kissed me one day. <laughs> it was an impulse. I just grabbed him and I kissed him on the lips and I ran away. Because I was like 20 years old. It's not like something you talk about marriage all the time. But I asked for her number. She wouldn't give me her number. No, I think he liked me first for sure because... She's hot. We met in a grocery store. We were in a class together. Came up to me one day and says, I got this perfect girl for you. He was a good dancer, but not too good. Like he was more soulmate. She's my queen. Of course, I'm the king. <laughs> I said, I have to ask you something. And she, and she said, what? And I kneeled down. And she was laughing and trembling. She gets so embarrassed. What did I say? I said, will you marry me or will you be my wife? Will you be my wife? He proposed to me on my birthday. And she said, yes. Are you sure? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to the marriage specialist now this is where we take letters and emails from you the listener and we ask the expert welcome back to the show dr. Yvonne always great to be here Dave now our first question comes to us from email again today uh, it's from waiting at desperate New Mexico okay dear dr. Yvonne I've been married for five years now at first they told me that the first year was the worst then they told me the first two years are the worst. And now they tell me that the first five years are the worst. Uh, my question is this, when does it get better? The answer is simple. The fact is that it doesn't get better. It doesn't get better, Dr. Yvonne? No, it just stops getting worse. Uh, practical advice as always. Tune in next time to The Marriage Specialist where we'll find out how to help your relationship. What you looking for, Dad? Not much to see out there, huh? Oh, wow, this is a crazy pad. Aren't you lost, buddy? Oh, man, this sure is. Hey, now, wait a minute. What is this? Look, I don't want nothing from you, Dad. I really don't. She owes me a fin, that's all, and I thought it'd be nice to have. What are you talking about? No sweat, Dad. I don't want nothing from you. She owes me a fin, that's all. Wow, you sure have a nice pad, Dad. Now, look, I don't mean to be rude, but you'll either have to tell me what you're talking about or get out of here. Look, the blonde, the one with the... <laughs> she owes me some bread, that's all. There's nothing to get bugged about. What she does here is your business. I can see you dig me, Dad. Look, I motor this chick, Vi Mason, over to the island. I got a boat. Now, when she asked me if I take her, well, I say okay, but she said she doesn't have the change. This is what she said. Okay, so we make a deal. Five bucks over and five bucks back. Now, look, I haven't the faintest idea who or what you're talking about. Look, Dad, all I want is the bread. When she didn't show by morning, I figure I'd been had. And I know she didn't go back on the regular run because I asked the putt-putt jockey and he said no. Now, I'm a real square, Dad. I didn't remember the name of the guy she said. Today I remember. How do you like that? Tom Stewart. That's the name of the guy she said when we made the run. So, enough of this jazz, Dad. Come on. I have to leave. Get out. Well, maybe I better wait around until the chick shows. You'll do nothing of the... Maybe it's worth it five dollars just to get rid of you. Here. There you go. What you do is your business, Dad. All I want is what's coming to me.
drive with you, Mrs. Ellis. There you are. Plenty of pickle? Yes, sirree, plenty of pickle. How are you, Mrs. Ellis? Warm, Mr. Nelson. It's a very warm day. I think I'll have something light. Uh, egg salad sandwich and a glass of iced tea with lemon. Don't like sugar in my tea, but plenty of lemon. Well, how about a nice hamburger or a tuna fish salad? What's the matter with your eggs? Oh, well, there's nothing the matter with them. I just don't have any. I've been out of eggs for almost a week now. Kramer's hens just stopped laying. It's a funny thing. Nothing like this ever happened before, except once about the time a Samuels boy died. They just up and quit laying. Would you like a tuna fish salad? Just the iced tea. Right. Say, Dad, can I have a Coke? All right. The Hubbards had to send over to the mainland special to get some eggs for their party. Can't bake a cake without eggs. Speaking of the wedding, are you still there, Sandy? Yes, ma'am. Shouldn't you be at the rehearsal? Holy cow! Charge it, Mr. Nelson! You know, Mr. Nelson, I wish I could have my sight back long enough to see Tom and Meg married. They must be a lovely couple. I'd give anything to see them. They're a handsome couple, all right. Tom Stewart's marrying a beautiful gal. The nicest of families, too. Say, Dad. What did you say the handle of the guy getting spliced was? Tom Stewart. The girl's name is Meg Hubbard. And little Sandy will be standing here to my right, next to the bride, and then the groom, of course, to her right, and you'll be standing here. The parents will be in their pews, and... May I help you? Yeah, I want to speak to Tom Stewart. Excuse me. You're interrupting a wedding rehearsal in there. Like I said, Dad, what you do is your business. I mean, it's crazy with me if you want to marry one chick and keep another one on the side for kicks. Wow. But I feel sort of a responsibility, seeing as how I brought your broad over on my tug. See what I mean? What are you driving at? Come on, Dad, don't you know? I gave you the money you're after. What more do you want? Well, it seems that our deal is in line for some renegotiations. Tom, what? hurry. We're waiting for you. Yeah, go ahead back. We'll pick it up later. Time, I got plenty of. Now... Started you, Tom, but candidates are the best kind. I had my mouth open and my eyes closed. This is gonna be the worst picture ever made. If you don't like it, I can take another. Oh, no. 
No, this is fine. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, let me look. No. Yeah, get a drink. Tom, what's wrong with it? Nothing. It's only a picture. Why are you so upset? I'm not upset. Well, something's bothering you. Is it another girl? You can tell me. I, I'll try not to be jealous. Jealous? I could be jealous of Vi. She's dead. She doesn't exist. She's a, a perfume. She's a footprint. She's a hand. She's a, a face in a picture. Who could be jealous of Vi? You're talking crazy, Tom. Let me see the picture. No. You're not making any sense. her face between the two of us. I don't see anything. Except you and me. wonder the way Tom's been acting lately. Anything Tom does is all right. He's perfect in your eyes anyhow, isn't he? Oh, don't worry, Sandy. I love him. I suppose every girl has a few last-minute doubts. Because he's always around the lighthouse? Because he imagines things that aren't so. Everything will be all right. It's late. the window. There's a light up there. I wonder who it could be. Well, a boy and a girl, probably. You wouldn't understand. I would, too. They used to go there to neck. Not anymore. Everybody says it's too cold and damp and smelly. Does Tom go there with anybody? Or does anybody meet him there? Now who's imagining things? You're right. That's probably only a reflection of the moonlight on a loose pane of glass. Correct it was for me to die, wasn't it? It's not my fault you're dead. Isn't it? I couldn't have saved you. Couldn't you? Maybe you can make yourself believe that, but not me. I was there, remember? You had to shut me up so you could marry me. You got away with that, all right, but now what are you going to do? I'll never let you marry me. You belong to me, Tom. You belong to a ghost. Trouble with making one first slip. You have to go from bad to worse to keep it quiet. What would you do if Meg gets wise to you? Stop her the same way you stopped me? I didn't kill you, Vi. 
I never killed anybody and I never will. And once I'm married, I'm going to live a very happy, very normal life with Meg and with our friends. And there's really nothing you can do about it. Isn't there? You may have noticed I've found my voice now. I pick things up fast. I'm going to use it to tell the world about you. I told you, Tom, no one will ever have you but me. Stop it, Pi. Try and make me. Tom Stewart killed me! 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 in such a hurry, Dad. You're always in a hurry. You shouldn't be like that. Give me that. I just want to talk to you, Chum. A nice, friendly talk. That's all. Give me that. You look sick, Dad. Something's wrong. Look, are you going to talk to me or not? Let's get this thing over with. Just what is it you want? Like I said, Dad, all I want is what's coming to me. You know, the way it looks to me, we should be sort of partners. I help you, and you help me. I bring your playgirl over to the island, and I figure it's worth some sort of service to you to sort of buy something from me. Like a silent service, catch? The word you're reaching for is blackmail. That's not it at all, Dad. We should be sort of pals. I done you a favor, now you can do me one. In other words, if I don't pay you blackmail, you go to my fiancé and expose my life of sin. Is that it? Well, you're saying it rather crude, Dad, but you're getting the idea. But it won't do you any good. I'm not going to pay you one lousy cent. In the first place, I don't know a girl named Vi. And even if I did, it wouldn't do you any good. Because, unfortunately, I'm not sharing my cottage with anyone. If it'd make you feel better, you can look for yourself. That's not necessary, Dad, not at all. You see, I already have. Well, then you know she's not here. Well, yes and no. You see, when you were so eager to come up with that five spot, I figured you were, well, anxious to keep everything sort of quiet-like. Now, when I find out you're getting spliced to another chick, well, the story's even getting better to read. Now, here comes the part I like the best. I do a little snooping when you're not around. Now, what do you think? I... You still with me, Dad? Go on. You see, that's the punchline. That's the gimmick. If this doll Vi isn't hiding in your cottage, and she isn't anyplace else on the island, and she never left the island. Now, what do you suppose could have happened to her, huh? You tell me. <laughs> You're a comedian. Uh-uh. You're the one that has the rest of the answers. You know something? Everything you've just said is all bluff. You don't know a damn thing. That's not friendly, Dad. Not friendly at all. In fact, I thought you'd take a wrong outlook on things, so I sort of borrowed something from a friend of yours. Get out of here. I can see that you finally dig me, Dad. Sorry, we're all out of chocolate ice cream. 
okay, well, you know what? Here, um, I'll just have one scoop of chocolate ice cream. Okay, let's try it this way. Okay, spell van like in vanilla. V-A-N. Okay, good. Now, spell straw like in strawberry. S-T-R-A-W. Very good. Now, spell stink like in chocolate. There is no stink in chocolate. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There's no stink in chocolate. Okay, then, you know what? I'll just have a bowl of chocolate ice cream. Why not? Thanks. We'll be right back. Hands can do incredible things. Now they can even help save a life with hands-only CPR. If you see an adult suddenly collapse, just call 911, then push hard and fast in the center of the chest until help arrives. Learn more at handsonlycpr.org. Life's this hard, graduating can be even harder. But you can help David and the students in your community make it through by visiting boostup.org. You gotta help me, Doc. And what seems to be the problem? Well, it's, it's who I am. And who are you? Well, I'm God. You're God. Hmm. We must go back to your childhood to find out how this started. Let us go back to the beginning. All the way back to the beginning? Yes, the beginning. Well, all right. In the beginning, I created the heavens and the earth. And I saw the heavens and the earth and I created daylight and darkness. And I saw this and it was good. here for so that you and I can have a little talk in peace and quiet it's cold just what do you want five thou five thou and don't tell me you no gut your future father-in-law is loaded <sighs> Hear anything? I didn't hear anything. I'm waiting to hear something from you. They're closing in on you, Tom. You'd better take care of him right now. No. Is that your final answer? Well, I, I didn't. Give me a minute. He's so easy, Tom. Just as easy as I was. Go ahead. There's a piece of pipe behind you. One good blow is all it takes. You got rid of me, but you'll never get rid of him as long as he lives. He'll bleed you of every penny, Tom. And all the time you'll have it hanging over you. What if people find out? What if Meg finds out? You can't let him do it, Tom. You'll lose everything. Look, you've had enough time. Do I get the money or don't I? Yes, Tom. Does he get paid? No. Right. You know what's best. See what your chick has to say about this. Get him, Tom. Wait. Change your mind? 
mother call you? What is it? Drop whatever you're doing and come here at once. All right. Oh, Sandy, we have to be at the church in 20 minutes and you're not even dressed yet. Never mind that now. Meg snagged her him. Come and hold it while I tack it up. You'll make a lovely wife, Meg. Oh, thanks. Meg, do you really love him a whole lot? Whatever makes you ask a thing like that? Last night you said you weren't sure. Well, I'm sure now. Oh, you'll remember to take the bouquet when I hand it to you, won't you? I'll remember. S suppose he'd done something awful bad. The way I feel now, I'd marry him no matter what. Oh, don't forget, you stand close behind me, but not too close. There, that's done. Mm. And you, young lady, get into your gown this instant. Mrs. Hubbard loaned us her ring in place of the one you lost, so that's okay. I've got the minister's fee here in my pocket, and everything's under control. So snap out of it. Okay, okay, I'll be all right. And get that funereal look off your face. This is a wedding man. Cheer him up, honey. Well, that's... That's a real pretty dress, Sandy. You're really gonna marry my sister, aren't you? I don't feel like that. I can't help it. Suppose you love somebody. Somebody who did something bad. And only you knew. Would you keep it secret? Well, good friends generally try to stand by one another. But what if it were something real, real bad? Real, real bad like what? Murder? gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God, signifying unto us the mystical union that is betwixt Christ and his church, which holy estate Christ adorned and beautified with his presence and first miracle that he wrought in Cana of Galilee, and is commended to St. Paul to be honorable among all men, and therefore is not by any to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, discreetly, advisedly, soberly, and in the fear of God. 
into this holy estate, these two persons present come now to be joined. If any man can show just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak, or else hereafter forever hold his peace. I knew something would happen. I was against the marriage from the beginning. Let me help you with your gown, dear. Don't bother, Mother Sandy will help me. Sandy, help your sister. Where is Sandy? I thought she came home ahead of us. Well, if she did, she's not here now. I wish you hadn't seen it, Sandy. Now I'm afraid you'll tell everybody, and I don't know what to do. Tell. But how can I be sure of that? Good friends protect each other. Yes. But sometimes they can't help themselves. Things leak out. The police hear about it. Do you know what would happen if the police heard about this? I'd go to the gas chamber. Sandy. Sandy, why did you have to see it? I couldn't help them. No. Nobody could help any of it except me. I could have saved Vi. I could have put my hand out to her. Instead, I killed her. Sandy. Sandy, you know I love you very much, don't you? Thank you, Reverend. She isn't there. I can't imagine where she could have gone. Where's Tom? The least he could do is be here when Meg needs him. Can't you leave him alone? There's a light in the lighthouse. Sandy could be there. She talks about the place all the time. Oh, I don't think she'd go there at night, though. We'd better make sure. Let's go up and look at the sea. You're not afraid of me, are you? 
you never used to be. Come on. When the moon shines, you can see the whole island from up here. Why did you have to see it? really bad movie sadly presents the weirdness thought of the week I would voice more complaints if I weren't afraid of all the remedies people might suggest just seen rushes direct from Hollywood of pictures being released in the coming weeks. And we are proud to announce that this theater will soon bring you the greatest array of pictures ever to reach our screen. You will see the finest stars in exciting performances. You will thrill to the suspense, comedy, romance, and drama of world-famous stories. Here's a glimpse of a few of them coming to this theater soon. Riches of infinity. From the world of the sun come the cremators to ignite all mankind. See the earth threatened by enemy aliens whose embrace means instant cremation. What was that? Creatures who look upon our civilization as though we were insects to be stepped on. I involved her in this and I involved you in this. And I don't know how far I can go. I don't know how to protect anyone. See the cremators running wild, rolling over the land to leave ash and waste behind them. Lord, that was. Bring it to me. Men pursued by rolling, spitting mountains of searing, incinerating flame. An adventure into the realms of terror and nightmare, unrivaled on the screen. See the cremator. And now, it's showtime.
most open recreation areas nights, weekends, and during the summer. If you don't help, nobody else will. For information, write Fitness, Washington, D.C. flavor caught in the closed fist of the bean, freed then by the grinding mills in an endless cascade, brewed into a beverage that is consumed in the hundreds of millions and the romance of cappuccino, like cafe au lait, but topped with whipped cream and a sprinkle of grated orange peel. The music of old Vienna in a cup. Viennese coffee, often spiced, but always with a drift of whipped cream. History of Istanbul and the Eastern lands in Turkish coffee, foam hiding the rich sweet brew. 
with the vigor of Latin American coffees, dark and zesty, served black in tiny cups with plenty of sugar. But always, it is coffee. How then do we make the perfect cup of coffee to our taste? Success lies in a single word, care. Three simple ingredients go into the brewing process. Water, coffee, time. Care will produce a perfect result every time. The beginning is the coffee pot, and there are as many varieties and types as taste will dictate. Yet, each is intended to do the same thing in a different way, to produce perfection in a coffee cup. To make a good cup of coffee, your coffee maker must be clean, free from all remembrances of that last pot of coffee, ready to begin its work anew, fresh and really clean. Water. Into a hundred thousand pots an hour, water flows in the coffee making process. Water. Too much or too little? Boiled first or later? or not at all, for how long? And yet, there is only one correct way. Water, the first element, carefully measured, clean and cold. Three quarters of a measuring cup for each cup of coffee, then brought to a full boil. Coffee, fresh. And again, questions. What grind? Percolator, drip, or fine? How much? Coffee, the second element. Your favorite blend, the proper grind for your coffee maker, one level CBI measure per cup. This, found in many homes, is the same as this, a Coffee Brewing Institute approved measure. So whether you use one or the other, the measurement will be the same and it will be accurate. The boiling water now passes over the coffee and the brewing process begins. The flame is lowered and, well, watch. The third element is time and it too must be measured accurately. The minutes counted. The flavor will emerge as the process continues. The taste of coffee heightens and increases until all that is good has been extracted. In this method of brewing, percolator, six to eight minutes over gentle heat, and then the liquid is coffee. From these grounds, there remains nothing more to gain but bitterness. No amount of cooking can extract another ounce of good taste, not another iota of good flavor. In the drip method, the coffee is measured and placed in the pot. The water, carefully pre-measured and brought to a full boil, is poured, still boiling, over the coffee. The time? It should take only four to six minutes. 
In the vacuum method, the coffee is carefully measured into the top bowl. The water is brought to a full boil before the brewing process is allowed to begin. Not more than three minutes after the water and coffee are in contact. Stir gently during the brewing process and lower the heat. That's all there is. Like all good secrets, its simplicity is its magic. of coffee has now been captured in a cup. It has substance, a body to go with its aroma and its taste. When prepared this way, it will be perfect every time. Three magic ingredients. Water, fresh and carefully measured. the proper grind, and carefully measured. Time, carefully measured. A simple recipe for perfect coffee. Perfect coffee, sending its glow into our lives around the clock. It helps us start the day with warmth and vigor. and spur to the morning's work. It provides the essential part of our pause at noon, indispensable during that unhurried hour in a world that often forgets to stop. In the romance of evening, when young dreams glow softly, coffee is always a perfect companion. And after dinner, it is at home in any setting when good taste is important. In the end, it remains a simple thing, easy to attain, well made and well enjoyed. A good cup of good coffee. seconds sooner than this one. He could have killed himself and others in the process. 14 seconds saved. Was it worth it? Well, that concludes our weirdness, really bad chick flick, Tormented, from 1960. And guys, if you've learned anything, I hope you've learned that you can't just get rid of a girlfriend that easily. Oh, guys, make sure you never get rid of a girl with a really big... Dave! Singing career. The really big singing career. Why? What did you think I was going to say? Don't you have something for me? Oh, yeah. Here's your bill. 
Oh, well, that's not too bad. Well, yeah, have you noticed I didn't put those dishes you broke out at the beginning of the program? I didn't break any dishes, you did. That's an even better reason that I didn't put it on. Hey, are you going to be paying by paper or plastic? Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to use plastic. Very good. Oh, here you go. Oh, oh, oh wait a second. Uh, you got some change coming. Okay. Okay. There you go. Make sure you tune in next time for our weirdness, really bad chick play. Wait, I've got something for you. This is for you. Okay. There you go. I'm on the show.